We're good. Oh no! Yes, 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 oh, yes. On, we yes. just had to operate the air for yes. a second. Wade comes through, first fish of the day. Looks like a good one too. It does. Yeah. Oh yeah, look at oh, that yeah. one. Woo. There we go. Yes! Middleton. You know, crappie fishing is one of those styles of fishing that really appeals to anybody. You know, you've got high end tournament fishing action that's going on all the way down to retirees sitting on a dock somewhere drowning minnows, first kids out, uh, guys, you know, fishing with jigs, whatever it may be. Crappie fishing is just something that's very popular. It's done across the nation and for a lot of reasons why. It's a it's a very fun fish to, you know, get bites on. They're, they're you know, light bites sometimes. Sometimes they're hard. You can catch them on minnows, catch them on jigs. Uh, guys will fish around brush piles. You can catch them around grass at different times or, you know, reeds when they're up spawning, you know, deep, shallow. Crappie just live in so many different uh, depths depending on the time of the year. On this episode of the Bass Pro Shops Fisherman's Handbook, host Wade Middleton is joined by a few friends for a day of crappie fishing down on Choke Canyon Reservoir in South Central Texas. In today's show, we'll highlight all things crappie fishing, from how to utilize Garmin Live Scope to find fish, to Ingle Coolers products that preserve live bait, as well as just showing how fun it is to go crappie fishing. Today we are crappie fishing at Choke Canyon. Um, this is the right time of year to catch a lot of crappie and a lot of big ones, and we did that today. <laughs> I don't even know how my minnow is you still alive. You can't lose your spot up here, man. I'm... <laughs> yes! <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Or, yeah. I'll go under you. There you go. Good job. This buddy. feels like a crappie. He's not dogging it like an old goo. Mm -hmm. Nah, now nah, he's dogging it a little no, bit. No, it's, it's a crappie. It's a crappie. Oh, he's going around in circles. That I ain't good. Sandbass. That ain't good. Oh, crappie. Just crappie. A nice one, too, dude. <laughs> we doubted you. Nice. Oh, man. Never, doubt, about it. It. Never doubt the host. No. Yep. <laughs> yeah, because we control the editing. That's it. That's it. He pays the editors. Today's trip marks the second time that this group of good friends have met to go on a crappie fishing trip at the Choke Canyon Reservoir. During the first go-round, the trio caught loads of summertime crappie and had a great time doing so. This time, That's they're good. achieving more of the same, we enjoying like good company, good times, and great fishing. Jim and I have been friends for a long time. Uh, Wade and I have been friends for uh, two or three years now. Um, this is the second time that we have been out on Choke Canyon crappie fishing together, and it was just as fun as it was the first time. Two of my biggest friends in the world, man. I've, I've known them a lot of years. I love them guys like brothers, man. And uh, to be able to spend a day out here with them is, uh, that's what, I mean, I'm 62 years old, man. That's what life's all about anymore, man. Time with friends. I'm not competitive anymore. Well, the TV show may show differently, but I'm normally not very competitive anymore. I just love laughing and having a good time. And I, I think the show's gonna show that. We're gonna have, but we had a good time out there. We caught up, we laughed. Um, to me, that's what life's all about. That's one big fish down there. Yeah. Uh -oh. Speaking of that, ah, you can see him coming up. It's yeah, a pretty good one. Whatever you, you caught, screen, you can yeah. watch it coming up. Yeah. I hope it's crappie. It's kind of, I don't think so. I don't think so either. <laughs> that was a big line coming up. That's a crappie. It's a two and a half pound. Oh, oh it holy is! Cow. Holy cow, Jim. Wow. <laughs> That's oh. a good one. <laughs> Gotta like that. Oh, my tummy likes that. That's a big one. That's a giant one. <laughs> He's caught two. I can't believe ones. how excited I get. This is, this is way better than that. If you don't get excited, this doing is this, way better than that. Coming up after the break, Wade and company continue catching Choke Canyon crappie out over deep brush piles. Stay tuned for more fish catching action. Yeah, I'm sorry. That's what they call you? Look at that one. But I just made Holy that up. <laughs> I love this. I mean, this is, this brings me back to my youth, man. Fun fishing is crappie fishing like this. And what, what is more fun than being out on the water with a couple of other people have like-minded mindsets to you and pitching in and cutting up and giving each other a hard time? Yep. Good one. Jasper Goo. Good one. Brush here, film this drum. one. Don't film that one. Look, this is the more important one here. <laughs> oh, here you God. go. Stop. <laughs> yeah, Look. mine weighs more. But you know what? We had fun on both of them. Yeah, we did. Got to watch them eat it. 
little live scope action. Woo! Gotta love it. We'll put him out there. Oh, I'll put mine in the cooler. Yeah, you put, in the cooler. <laughs> you put yours in the cooler. You put yours in the important place. I'll put mine out there in the lake. So we can catch him again. Oh, thank you. Just in the bottom of the boat. I'm laying down there. The beauty of crappie fishing is that it's an activity that anyone can enjoy. Whether you're young or old, new to the sport of fishing, or an experienced veteran, all one needs to have fun outdoors catching crappie is a rod, reel, some live bait, and a little bit of patience. We hear now from several of Bass Fishing's top touring pros about why they love the sport of crappie fishing. I love crappie fishing because crappie fishing is like crappie catching. And when I go fishing, I like to catch a lot of things. And when you go crappie fishing, typically I, you're going to get a lot of bites. And I just love it. You know, one of the biggest things about crappie fishing for me is just simply the fact that it's something that I can get out and do and completely take my mind off bass fishing. You know, I know that, you know, bass fishing to me is a job. I mean, that is my everyday go-to job. And everybody likes to get away from their day in, day out job by doing something. A lot of y'all get out to go fishing, bass fishing to get away from your job. Well, for me, crappie fishing's the deal. So a few of the things that I really, really love about crappie fishing is number one, I can take an angler that maybe is not a fluent angler. He doesn't get to go fishing a lot. With crappie fishing and live scope, we're gonna go, we're gonna get a lot of bites, we're gonna catch a lot of fish, and that person may get hooked on fishing, maybe not bass fishing, he's gonna get hooked on fishing and evolve into a bass fisherman. Another thing is, it just keeps me, after the off season, I wanna get out there. You know, I may not wanna bass fish, but I wanna be fishing, I wanna be getting bit, I wanna catch fish. And the cool thing about that is, watching them on live scope, it's a warm up. It, it's a pickup game for me for the season. I'm able to watch fish, use live scope, play with my settings, and get bit, eat good that night, um, yeah, it really prepares me uh, for the season. They don't call me Big Crappie Bankin' for nothing. Oh, son. That's what they call you? Look no, at that no. one But I just made Holy that up. Cow. I just made that up. But That's a giant. It's all personal preference, honestly. A lot of people hook them in the sides oh, and the okay. tails. I like to hook them right underneath the Sorry. chin and come out the nose because whenever I swim it through the pile, I want it to look as natural as possible. With everybody having live scope these days, these fish do get accustomed to it, the boat pressure, and you want, I mean, it is live bait, so it is as natural as it gets, but hooking it in the nose just helps a little bit more. You know, crappie fishing is, is really pretty simple in a lot of ways, but I think the one thing that I would tell everybody nowadays, keep, keep your bait as lively as you can, a good a live bait cooler, like what we're using, uh, it's man when you put your hand in there the air the water temperature is like 10 degrees cooler than what it is outside and so those, those minnows are real lively. Keeping minnows and live bait fresh and in peak condition are key to being able to have a successful fishing trip. Engel Coolers makes a full line of products designed to keep things cool and preserve live bait out on the water. At ICAST in Orlando, Florida Engel Coolers took home the best of category title for fishing accessory in the new product showcase with its USB rechargeable lithium ion XL live bait generator pump. I'm very proud to announce that we have won the best in category for fishing accessories. That's a lovely little award and we won it for this particular product packaged like that. It is a a bubbler. It is a rechargeable lithium powered aerator system with a silicone tube. It comes standard with USB and, and a little adapter that you can plug it in, excuse me, plug it into the wall. But what makes it unique is it is completely waterproof in all of the electronics areas. There's an on off button. When it's running, I've got it really close to the microphone. You can hardly hear it run off. You can feel a very slight vibration, but it's probably three or four times quieter than traditional air pumps. It's got an intermittent feature, and it's got four speeds, so you can ramp up your airflow depending on how many minnows or shrimp or live bait you've got in your cooler. Essentially, it's got the silicone non-kinkable tube, 
And with this particular pump, because the volume can get quite high, we've got a heavily weighted air diffuser or air stone that sits on the bottom and just puts up a huge stream of bubbles which keeps things alive pretty well. But, uh, it's been awesome. These are available right now in stock. This is the larger version of the two. This is the XL. We do have a large, which is something we launched last year and very successfully. Superficially looks very similar, just a little bit smaller and a little bit less capacity. For Essentially for coolers around 19 quarts and smaller, live bait coolers. This is for the 30 or a five gallon bucket or something else that you've got that's larger than 30 quarts. It's time now for another break. When we return, we take a look at Garmin LiveScope and how it can be a very useful tool for crappie anglers. Don't go away. Where's your stuff at? Look at him right here. Oh yeah, look, look at, at him. him. He's right on oh, it. Oh wow, they're swarming. He is right on it. You know, when you look back at the days of old in, in crappie fishing, a guy would come up, drop his anchor, kind of where he thinks it is, and one of the two guys, the guy in the back of the boat or the guy in the front of the boat, might be on the brush pile. And a lot of times you really only know somebody had to get hung in the brush pile. Now with LiveScope, you get over a brush pile and you can kind of pan around left and right. You can see the exact depth. You can see where the fish are holding. Are they on the bottom of it? Are they on top of it? You can identify even what species are swimming through there. You can watch your bait and your line uh, as they pendulum down. You can know if you made a good cast or a bad cast. You can see the fish react to it. Uh, and, it and those things are really cool. It makes, honestly, I'm telling you, it makes fishing a lot more fun because it's very visual. And at the same time, it will give you telltale insight on what you're doing wrong so you can make adjustments. You can see the brush pile around them. Look, there's the line. You can just see his line. That's the, somebody's fishing line where they're casting out in front of the boat. See the bait falling down? See it going down? It's going to come right across these four fish right here. What you're seeing is the boat rocking back and forth with the transducer. There's somebody's bait right here. They're about eight feet in front of the boat. You can see the line all the way up where they're at the front of the bow of the boat. They're right in the edge of the brush pile. That's got to be Chase. It's got to be right Chase here. if he's in the brush pile hung up. <laughs> they're using really little bitty split shot and a tiny, tiny, tiny minnow. They don't have a lot of weight in there, so it's kind of drifting, letting that minnow swim. Oh, 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 oh somebody oh. got one. That was Jim. You can see yes. that go down. You can see his line stretch. Look at that one. Jim came the through in the clutch. You can see the yes. fire. You know, one thing about it, crappie fishing has changed so much from the days that I started doing it early as a youngster. I mean, back when I was a youngster, we would have to go out and find brush piles or plant our brush piles, and we were always at the mercy of when those crappie would show up in those brush piles before we could actually catch them. The beauty of what we have now with technology, uh, with, with our electronics and especially forward-facing sonar, live scope, is you really can target crappie almost 12 months of the year now if you just understand their movement and where they're gonna go. With live scope, crappie fishing has changed 180 degrees. You know, used to, it was almost a bobber kind of deal. You sat in one spot, you waited for the crappie to bite. Now, live scope has changed crappie fishing where it's almost like bass fishing. You go and you hunt them, and, it, and sometimes you're hunting a single fish, sometimes you're hunting a school of fish, but the cool thing about it is, I mean, you can, you can move around, and, and what'll happen is you may fish three spots, not see any, and I don't cast crappie fishing unless I see one. But when you find them, I mean, you can sit there and you can catch them and you can catch them and you can catch them. Isn't it incredible how you can <clears throat> ver or identify the species on just, yes. just looking at the screen itself? Like when you see a gar come across, he takes oh, it. Yeah, gar screen. really. He hooked yeah, one like uh, three or four years ago out here. We're oh, like, yeah. oh my gosh, you could see it swim in the screen, go right up to his little minnow and eat it. A little bitty minnow like that and a five foot long gar. So one of the questions I get most of all is, what do fish look like on live scope? What is the difference between crappie, bass, gar? Um, you can take a gar or a large carp. Obviously, you can tell by the size. Um, a lot of fish, bass, crappie, they're, they're, they're relati relatively the same size, especially in a brush pile. So how I learned to dif 
differentiate, I can't even talk, to tell them apart is how they act in that pile. You know, a bass, he wants his personal space. You may have a school of bass, but they're gonna be separated, you know, by two or three or four feet. A crappie, they will stack on top of one another. And, and you know, they're all typically gonna be the same size. And that's how I tell the difference between crappie and bass. I'll turn the gain up a little bit. We'll see them a little better. Now you can actually see his line. We had our gain too low. I actually like the gain up. There he uh -oh. goes right there. And you can see his fish. See his <laughs> fish right there? And that was his, actually his weight above it. Watch yeah. him fight that fish all the way to the top. How cool is that? And there's the fish. We've reached the final break in the show. On the other side, we'll wrap up things from Choke Canyon Reservoir and fillet some fish to take home and drop in the fryer. But before we go to break, we'll introduce you to a product from TH Marine that'll help you keep your minnows alive. So one of my favorite things to do in life is to go crappie fishing. We all love it. Great table fare, but we're using live bait a lot when we do that. So we develop a product here at TH Marine called Minnow Maker. It's in our G-Juice line, which we use to keep bass alive. And this Minnow Maker's got a little bit different concentrate, a little bit different formula, but it gives those minnows an extra kick, especially on those hot days when you've got so many minnows in a tank, sometimes you see that foam up, that's actual ammonia buildup. This will knock that down. We've got several tackle stores that sell live bait using this. Minnow Maker is gonna keep those minnows swimming in those brush piles and to get the crappie on the end of your line. Dude, I had no idea it was on. I had no idea. I just got to be honest. I had no idea that fish was on there. None. You get lazy, stop looking at the screen, and thought, it, oh, God. Oh, that's a nice one. When it comes to crappie fishing, it's a, it can be a very social sport. That's something that we really enjoy. I mean, Jim and I get to get together a few times, you know, every other year, and we like to go crappie fishing when we do. Uh, he's really busy with Cast for Kids. They do events all over the nation. It's catch a special thrill. It's one of the best um, charity type organizations you're going to find because they take underprivileged kids out fishing and, and give them opportunities to go do things that we take for granted, get their families out, get them all engaged. The goal of the foundation, we've been around for 32 years now, and uh, our goal has always been simply to not only bless the lives of children with special needs, but get family together, families together in the outdoors, get more people out fishing. Kids are not as innocent as far into life as they should be, in my opinion. You know, when, when you're around a little child with autism or with Down syndrome or cerebral palsy, um, they're truly innocent. And the innocence it swells your heart, man. It makes you feel good, you know. You caught it out in the middle of nowhere. You're really good. No, no, they, they were underneath us. Oh, it's behind That's us. That's how you're supposed to do it. Man, we had a great day today. We got to fish with my buddies Chase Hux and Wade Middleton. Um, came down here to Choke Canyon, uh, one of the best crappie lakes in the world, and we just tore them up. Um, we got up there in the front of that boat and stared down at that live scope and just hosed them, man. It was awesome. It was an awesome morning of fishing. Got him? Jerked. Nice. Watched him eat it on the screen. Oh, come here, buddy. This might be a goo. Uh-oh. What we got? Oh, ah, big old bluegill. 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 Stuck it in the eye. Yeah, you do. <laughs> Those are pretty fish. Yeah, they are. I often said if a bluegill got to be seven, eight, nine pounds, I would quit bass fishing. I'd rather catch them. They're oh, fighting they're good, man. I love the way they bite. Yeah, aggressive. Today's show proves why crappie fishing is such a fun and enjoyable activity. With the right gear, electronics, and live bait, you can spend the whole day catching fish. And to go along with the great fishing action, it's a hobby that allows you to socialize and spend time on the water, making memories with good company. This is like three times they've had doubles and I can't get the triple. Oh! Get you one? Go. Yes, we finally Let's got see. our triple. Hold it up, there's just yes. a picture. Yes! Here's just a picture. <laughs> We're gonna hook it. 
I gotta get mine out first. No way. <laughs> Thanks for watching this episode of the Bass Pro Shops Fisherman's Handbook. This has been a Caraco TV production.